Hi, this is the Disting Mark IV. It's currently clocked by the Mini Brute 2 and is sequencing plates from mutable instruments. But sequencing is really only one of about 80 other things that it can do. The first Disting had only 16 algorithms or modes. But over the years, more and more have been added by expert sleepers. In this clip, I'll give you an overview of the module. I'll give demos of my top five algorithms. And broadly speaking, the others are ranging from oscillators, envelope generators, and LFOs, all the way to audio recording, sample playback, physical modeling, and effects. The layout is simple. You have two outputs, A and B, and three inputs, X and Y, and Z, which is typically a control input that's also controllable with this knob. What each output or input does varies based on the algorithm you're using. The S encoder on top is used for algorithm and other menu item selections. There's a small dot matrix display where names of algorithms or menu items scroll across. The Z encoder is used for selecting or changing parameters and can be also used to motion sequence parameter changes. Both encoders are also push buttons. There's a micro SD card slot, which is necessary for some, but not all the algorithms. Finally, before I move on to my top algorithms, I just want to commend expert sleepers for using these multicolor lead jacks for the inputs and outputs of their modules. I don't understand why all manufacturers don't use this. This isn't a toy. These lights are so helpful in understanding what's going on with your signal flow. For example, these are LFOs. And likewise, it really helps you identify triggers, gates, and audio signals. Okay, so on to my top five algorithms. Now, mind you, there are plenty of basic VCO slash LFO slash envelope type algorithms here. None of these made my top five because I already have most of them in my semi-modular synth, which is something I highly recommend you get. From a cost slash benefit perspective, nothing beats a semi-modular synth, whether the Mini Root 2 and there are a few others like the Mother 32, uh, nothing beats that to get your Eurorack setup going. Okay, so the first of five algorithms I wanted to show you is this one. It's called Shift Register Quantized Randomized CVs, which is a fancy name for something that comes up with random sequences for you that are quantized to a scale, and then you can determine their length or just freeze them if you like, once you have something that sounds good. These X's show you when you've frozen a sequence. This algorithm, like many of the others, has a few parameters. For example, pattern length. So now it's eight notes long, and I can shorten it dynamically to four notes if I want. I can also play around with the scale. And even though the screen is relatively small, you kind of get used to the names scrolling uh, across the screen, and it's actually pretty legible for such a small screen. And when you've had enough of random sequences, let's move on to my top five algorithm number two. This might sound a bit more familiar. This algorithm is fairly simple. It just plays MIDI files off the SD card. The clock or timing for this MIDI file is coming from the Mini Brute 2, and this time we're also hearing Mini Brute 2 sounds playback. Output A is sending volt per octave, and output B is gate. So if you've ever had a problem with your sequencer not holding enough notes, just download any MIDI file, any length, or create your own, plug it into here, you're good to go. Okay, let's move on to algorithm number three in my top five list. Now there are plenty of delays on the Disting Mark IV. I picked this one, the tape echo delay. The Z knob controls the amount of feedback. And you can modulate this with voltage into the Z input. Pretty straightforward stuff, and I've mapped uh, the attenuator on the Mini Brute 2 to control the timing. Ok, 
Okay, on to my top algorithm number four. And if you've seen this channel before, you know that if there's a reverb around, it's gonna be on my list. The Z knob or voltage is dry wet control. And if you click it, you can change the reverb parameters. I'll stop the sequence for a bit, just so you can hear this a little bit better. So the first parameter lets you determine room size. Next parameter is feedback. So you can see, once you get used to working with these two knobs, one to choose which parameter you're editing, and the one on top, the S, param the S knob, to change that parameter, the display will tell you what you're doing. For example, this is the character of the reverb. Then it's pretty easy to figure out what does what. You still need, do need to look at the manual uh, to find the algorithms. There is onboard help, but it's kind of tedious to read through that. So bear in mind that with 80 algorithms, you're going to need to have the manual nearby. There's also a quick cheat uh, sheet that you can download, but even that is a few pages long. The last parameter, by the way, is filter. You can apply a low-pass filter to the reverb. Okay, on to number five on my personal top five list. And this is algorithm I8. Now, the disting can play samples in a variety of ways. But one of the more interesting ones is the fact that you can trigger two different samples and create beats this way. You can put any number of samples on the SD card. Here, I'll change my kick to any one of these samples. Let's move it back to kick. Then my other sample can be changed as well. Take a look at the XY inputs. Notice how the triggers are coming in from the Mini Brute 2. Then finally, we can control the pitch of each of the samples using the Z knob. There are a few other sample playback algorithms that let you control samples but I like this one in particular because it lets you control the pitch of both samples. And you can do that not only using the knob, but also modulate it externally. So just like I can turn this knob left and right and affect the pitch of my uh, hi-hat, I can also take one of the um, LFOs on the Mini Brute 2, take LFO 1, plug it into the Z input, and now I'm controlling the pitch of my hi-hat with LFO 1. Let's choose random. I can change the rate. Let's get a few more samples in there. And there's two kinds of random LFOs uh, in the Mi Brute 2. There's a simple sample and hold one, and there's one that glides between the values. That sounds even cooler with this. Scratching DJs of the world, beware. So that's pretty much it. If you like knob per function modules, then uh, the disting isn't for you. But if you don't mind looking at the manual every now and then, the disting might save you in a pinch because it's got everything from a VCA to a scratching DJ. So that's it for the disting Mark IV, rightfully named the Swiss Army Knife of Eurorack modules. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section below. Hit like if you like this video and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.